Okay, in this video we're going to look at the notion of a line integral over a vector field. So we need a couple of things to set us up. So let's say we've got this curve that's defined in a vector um, function r of t. And you can think about this parametrically as well, although in this case it's really better to think about it as a vector function. And let's say that t goes from a to b to parameterize the curve that we're really interested in. And then we've got this vector field f. And then here's the picture that I've got going on. So I've drawn my vector field in red and I've simplified it so it's just all going straight up. Although uh, this is obviously the same for any general vector field or the same construction. And then we've got our curve that's going through this vector field and then I've labeled the endpoints R evaluated at A and R evaluated at B. And then since we're talking about an integral, we're going to want to split this interval A to B up into pieces. And so let's just kind of recall how that goes. So A is going to be equal to T0, which is going to be less than T1, less than T2, all the way up to uh, Tn minus 1, which is less than Tn, which is equal to B. And then furthermore, we can call delta T is B minus A over N, and we'll assume that all of these are equally spaced. So we've got this part of our subinterval here, R evaluated at Ti minus 1 to R evaluated at Ti. Now let's talk about what we mean by the line integral of a ve vector field. Well, it's in some ways best described by physics, and we can think about this vector field as some sort of force field, like an electromagnetic field or something, and our line integral should give us the work, or in other words, the total energy that's required for some particle to move through this force field. And so, um, just look at the, our picture here. So if we have this particle moving along this path, then it feels different, amount, uh, different amounts of force depending on how it's aligned with the vector field. So for example, right about here, since the vector field is going up and this curve is going up, it's kind of helped along by the vector field. But here, um, it is moving in a way that is uh, essentially orthogonal to the vector field. So the vector field is not really hurting or helping its motion right here. But as it moves down, the vector field is going to hurt its motion. So it's going to take more work for this particle to go straight down. Um, Okay, good. And so that's kind of how we want to think about this. And we're also going to need this like simple formula work equals force times distance. So uh, this line integral of a vector field should give us the total work or the total energy required to move a particle along this path in this force field. Okay, great. So uh, notice that our total work is going to be approximately equal to the work um, the sum um, I equals 1 to N of the work on this interval Ti minus 1 to Ti. And maybe I'll go ahead and call that uh, the sum I equals 1 to N of the work on uh, this interval will be called Wi. Okay, so now we need to calculate this approximate work on this subinterval given by um, Ti minus 1 to Ti using this formula that work is equal to force times distance. So uh, that's going to turn into the following. So this uh, work on this thing is going to be equal to, so we have our force field um, R at, evaluated at our point R of Ti. So that's going to be the force that's happening exactly at this point right here. Um, and then we need to dot this with the vector that takes us from this point to this point. So that's going to be given by R of Ti minus R of Ti minus 1. Okay, great. And that's exactly what we need. So our force times our distance. So notice that's actually built into this because the force is actually going to be this vector times the unit vector in this direction. But then the distance is going to be the length of this vector. So we might as well just keep these pieces together. Okay, so now uh, the next thing that we want to do is use the mean value theorem 
So the mean value theorem will say that there exists some ti star in the interval ti minus 1 ti um, such that we have this average change is equal to the instantaneous change. In other words, this change from ti minus 1 to ti given by that difference is going to be equal to uh, r prime evaluated at this ti star times ti minus ti minus 1, which is delta t, which tells us that we have this total work is going to be given by this uh, R, sorry, this F evaluated on our um, curve dotted with this R prime evaluated at Ti star delta T. Great. But now we can plug that work into this thing up here and then simplify. So I'll erase the board and then we'll get to that. Okay, so bringing what we had up, we had this total work as this particle passes through this force field on this curve is given by the sum i equals 1 to n, so it's the sum over this partition of this interval. f evaluated at a point on the curve dot this tangent vector to the point of the curve dt. So uh, notice that means that we can take a limit and get that this total work by this particle is going to be given by the integral from A to B of um, F evaluated at R of T dotted with R prime of T dt. Okay, great. So we've turned it into just a um, integral over one variable function. So, because notice if you take a dot product of two vectors, you get a scalar function. So uh, this is actually what we're going to define to be the line integral over a vector field. And this will be the line integral over C of F dot dr. So that will be our notation. And so where this r is the parameterization of uh, the curve. Okay, I'll erase the board. I'll put this formula over here and then we'll do an example. Okay, so now that we've derived this formula for the line integral over a vector field, um, we want to look at a couple of examples. So the first example we'll look at is this one. So let's say our vector field is x squared in the i direction plus y squared in the j direction. So this is going to be like x squared comma y squared. And then uh, our curve is going to be the arc of this parabola from negative 1, 2 to 2, 8. So in other words, We've got this parabola y equals 2x squared. So that thing looks kind of like that. And then we are going from negative 1, 2, so that would be like right here, to 2, 8, so that would be like right here. And notice we are going in this direction. So that is really important in this case that we do the correct direction on the curve. So we're going like that. All right. So let's go ahead and parameterize this thing. Notice uh, it's actually pretty easy to parameterize it. We can just let uh, um, one of the parameters be x. So maybe we'll let t be x, and we're going to go from negative 1 to 2. So that means we can take uh, x to be equal to t. We can be y, take y to be equal to 2t squared, and then, then t is going to run between negative 1 and 2. Okay, great. Notice this is a parametric version of that plane curve, kind of obviously. But now in vector form, we're going to have r of t is t in the i direction plus 2t squared in the j direction. In other words, it's the vector t comma 2t squared. Okay, great. Now we are all set to apply our formula. So in this case, we have the integral over this vector field of f dot dr. So that's going to be the integral from negative 1 to 2 of f, but we need to evaluate f where um, x is equal to t and y is equal to 2t squared. So that's going to look like this. So all of the x's I'm going to replace with t, so that's going to give me t squared. All of the y's I need to replace with 2t squared, so that's going to give me 4t to the fourth. So we got something like that. Um, but now we need to dot that with r prime. But notice given that r is equal to 2t 
t, 2t squared, that's going to make r prime equal to 1, 4t. So we have 1, 4t, and then we are integrating with respect to t. Okay, now we take the dot product of those two vector functions. That gives me the integral from negative 1 to 2 of, so t squared times 1 is t squared. 4t to the 4th times 4t is 16t uh, to the 5th dt. Uh, but now, I mean, we're essentially home free here. This is going to be 1 3rd t cubed um, plus 16 over 6 t to the 6th evaluated from negative 1 to 2. And that's going to give you some number. I won't evaluate that. Um, I think this is a fine place to stop for this example. All right, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do another example. Okay, so we're going to do one more example, and that's going to be the integral of this vector field in R3 over this line segment. Okay, so I want to just recall that while we were performing uh, the derivation of this formula, we never talked about two dimensions, three dimensions, four dimensions. We did everything in an arbitrary number of dimensions, which is really nice because that means we can apply this to really any example that we get immediately. So uh, let's go ahead and parameterize this line segment. And I want to recall that all line segments can be parameterized with essentially the same formula. It's going to be 1 minus t times the starting point plus t times the ending point. Okay, so why is that the case? Notice if we plug t equals 0 into this, we'll be at the starting point um, because we have 0 times the ending point. If we plug t equals 1 into this, we have 0 times the starting point plus 1 times the ending point, so we'll be at the ending point. Um, and so what is nice about this is this works for all line segments and um, t always runs between 0 and 1. So this is going to give us 1 minus t then the starting point is 1, 0, minus 2, uh, plus t, the ending point is 4, 6, 3. Okay, great. So uh, let's see what that gives us. That's going to give us 1 minus t in this component plus 4t. So that's going to give us uh, 3t plus 1 when all is said and done there. And then we're going to have uh, 6t in the second component. And here we're going to have, uh, let's see, it's going to be 2t minus 2 here plus 3t, so that's going to be 5t minus 2. Okay, so now uh, we want to plug this into our formula, so uh, the line integral f dot dr, so that's going to be the the integral from 0 to 1 of f evaluated on this curve. So notice that's going to give uh, the vector function y times z. So that's uh, 30t squared minus 12t. And then x times z. So that's going to give us 15t squared. And then, so x times z is obviously this guy times this guy, so I'm foiling it out. I've got 15t squared. Then notice minus 6t plus 5t, so that's going to be minus t, and then minus 2. So that's what we get for the middle component. And then x times y. So x times y is going to be 18 t squared uh, plus 6t, and then we need to do minus twice z, so that's going to be minus 10t plus 4, so here we have that, and then minus 10t is going to make that a minus 4t. Okay, so we've got something like that for f, and now we need to dot that into r prime, but let's go ahead and add what r prime here is. So notice these are all linear, so that's really easy to find. So this is going to be 3, uh, 6, and 5. So that means we need to dot this with the vector 3, 6, 5, and then dt. Okay, great. So let's see, that's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of, so we need to multiply this term by 3, so that's going to give us 90t squared minus 36, 36t. And then 6 times this guy, so that's going to be plus. So let's see, uh, 6 times 15 is the same thing as 3 times 30, which is 9. So that's going to be uh, 90t squared minus 6t minus 12t. 
12, okay? And then finally, uh, five times uh, this third bit. So let's see, five times 20 is 100. So that makes five times 18, 96. So that's gonna be 96t squared minus 20t plus 20. And then all of this is dt. Okay, so we've got kind of a big scalar integral to tackle, um, but we can uh, simplify it quite a bit probably. So I'll uh, clean up the board, I'll bring this up, and then we will finish it off. Okay, I cleaned up the board and did some sim Okay, I cleaned up the board and did some simplification, and I got that our line integral over our vector field is equivalent to this scalar integral, so zero to one of 276t squared minus 60t plus eight. So that's really easy to calculate. So notice that's gonna be uh, 276 over three t cubed minus 60 over two, so that's gonna be 30 t squared plus eight t. We need to evaluate that from zero to one. Obviously evaluating at zero gives us zero, so that's gonna give us the following. Okay, so 276 over three is 92, so we have 92 minus 30 plus eight. So let's see, minus, uh, so 92 plus eight is 100 minus 30 is 70. So the final answer is 70 in this case. All right, that's a good place to end this video.